Hello, Mike Ako, and good afternoon. Mahalo for joining us today in AEN's hearing. It's Monday, March 11th, 2024, and we're convened here in room 224 and also video conferencing, which includes the audio and video of remote participants. It's being streamed live on YouTube. And the unlikely event that this hearing is cut short for reasons tech reasons or whatever, then the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on March 15th, that's Friday, at 1 p.m. and room 224. And that's during AEN's time slot and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. And because of our 90 minute time limit, uh, your testimony will be limited to two minutes uh, for all testifiers. And let's see, so we'll start off with, uh, HB 2104, HD1 appropriates funds to support the Hawaii Invasive Species Council to ensure its long-term viability and prevent future problems. First up is Department of Ag. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Member. Dexter Kishida, Department of Agriculture. We stand on our comments and would like to com uh, further comment that uh, this week HISC is uh, pulling together a bunch of IS and other supporting groups to discuss, part, or part of the discussion is around data capture. So as our comments state to do that, um, Chelsea is taking the lead on this. So appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dexter. Chelsea Arnott from DLNR. Aloha, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richard, Senator Rhodes, Chelsea Arnon on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and also program support for our Hawaiian Basis Species Council. We'll stand on our written testimony and support and just want to mention that the funding that goes through the Hawaiian Basis Species Council really supports a broad spectrum of projects working on invasive species prevention and management from state agencies to the Invasive Species Committees, Hawaii Ant Lab. Um, so it's a really critical source of funding. So appreciate the opportunity to provide testimony, and I'm around for any questions. Mahalo. Thank you. Brian Miyamoto from Hawaii Farm Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have our written testimony and support. I, I just wanted to uh, uh, make this, this committee aware that Additional funding was not provided in the House budget, HB 1800 HD 1. So we would like this committee to consider in this bill, which is basically the only vehicle left, uh, including $4.25 million, um, which is the amount that we're looking for for his additional to their base of 5.25. Uh, again, this is the only vehicle still alive. Uh, we would like to see it in the Senate budget as well. Um, his plays a critical role. We have testified countless of bills for invasive species this year. Uh, we don't need to talk about how bad it is getting, how bad it is, and how bad it will get if we don't provide the proper resources to our agencies to combat invasive species. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and we ask for your consideration of $4.25 million more for his. Thank you, Brian. On Zoom, Stephanie Easley with CGAPS. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, member of the committee. My name is Stephanie Easley with the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. You have our written testimony. We are in strong support of this bill and the work that HISC does. HISC, through their grant process, is able to leverage the funds they have to cover a variety of projects in the state. They're kind of like at the end of It's a Wonderful Life when he's saying, well, how much do you need? Like, what's the minimum you need? And we'll give you that and then that. And it's able to fund, to use those seed funds to leverage other dollars and to fund projects that would otherwise not have that base grant funding. So we strongly support this bill and we thank you for consideration of our testimony. Thank you. Uh, next is Eulalia Woodson from Nature Conservancy and support. If I call your name and you'd like to testify, please step forward. Uh, Guy Sellier with Hawaii Forest Industry Association in support. Wayne Tanaka in support from Sierra Club. Uh, Kehalani Lum from YAA Land LLC in support. Beverly Heiser in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Members, any questions? 
I have a question for Chelsea. Chelsea, in uh, the Department of Ag's testimony on February 12th uh, before the House Ag Committee, uh, they said, quote, to be consistent with the goals of the interagency biosecurity plan, data collected through HISC functions, awards, and by partners should be entered into a database which the department has full access as it relates to survey and control actions so the department can coordinate regulatory response and control and research statewide. This data should be maintained in the state standard GIS data platform, ESRI, ArcGIS, unquote. Your response? Yeah, mahalo, Chair, for the question. Chelsea Arnott on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and um, appreciate the comments provided by the Department of Agriculture around data sharing. It's a real challenging, um, complex process to standardize data across multiple agencies and organizations for multiple species. Um, so HISC does track our funded projects data if they do spatial work they go on the ground and they treat and survey certain invasive species. We do collect that information through GIS um, and, and spreadsheets, and that gets put into the legislative report every year. And that is also available for our state agencies if they like to see it. Um, getting to what I, I feel is the comments made by the Department of Agriculture, when we get to species like little fire ant that are really multi-agency responses on each of the islands, we don't have a central database at this point. And we've already made uh, motions to start doing that work with our partners and the Department of Agriculture through what we're calling our, our data hui and starting with little fire ants is really the starting species. So we're making moves to make sure we do have this central database that would probably be hosted through ArcGIS online, which most people have access to, or another system um, that a lot of our partner organizations are using. But it'll be um, with consultation from the Department of Agriculture of what the state agencies are comfortable with. Mahalo. Thank you. OK, moving on to our next measure. HB 2131 HD2 appropriates funds for the Department of Ag to mitigate and control the spread of the two line spittle bug and to fund recovery efforts for areas affected by it. First up is Department of Ag. Thank you, Dexter Kishida, Department of Agriculture. We stand on our testimony in support and just wanted to also further comment that the funding for this is key because we, I, in a recent conversation with our ranchers, it really is two parts, that the two-line spittle bug destroys the, the kikuyu and the grasses currently, but then a bunch of invasive weeds then pop up, which require even more mitigation. So if we can control the spittle bug from the, the, at, at the front end, we'll reduce the cost to both the farmer and the state in the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Chelsea or not? UMR? Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Chelsea Arnott, on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, we'll stand on a written testimony in support of this measure and then just emphasizing past testimony that this really is a contained pest right now. And if we don't add more resources to the actual man management of two lines spittle bug on the west side of Hawaii Island, this is going to become like a little fire ant issue where we're asking for more and more resources year, year after year. So mahalo for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Parwin Grewal from the UH. Aloha. Uh, Good afternoon, uh, Chair Gabbard and uh, Vice Chair Richards and the committee members. Um, this is Parwin the Grewal, the new Dean for the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, commonly known as CTAR. And I stand on our written uh, testimony in support and we are here to answer any questions. Thank, Thank you. you yeah. Next, Mike Munakata from Ulupono. Yeah, Ulupono will sign this testimony strong support. Thank you. Thank you, Micah. Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have our written testimony in support. We would just like to note or I request that 800,000 uh, be appropriated. That was the amount in the original bill and in the companion bill. That was the amount requested. That's $800,000. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. 
Hunter Hevelin from Hawaii Farmers Union. Well, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Hunter Hevelin here on behalf of Hawaii Farmers Union, standing up for the testimony. Hunter, are you still there? Your mic went out. Okay. Uh, I'm still here. Yeah, I was just saying we'll stand on our written testimony and support. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Nicole Galassi from Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, members of the committee. Nicole Galassi on behalf of the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council, we strongly support this bill. We know that invasive species are important to address. That's not the debate. The reason we're asking specifically for attention on the two-line spittle bug is that this is one that affects both conservation goals and food production. Uh, the opportunity here, like Chelsea said, is that there is it is currently contained in Kona. So we have the chance to keep it in check before it gets out of control. Those ranches in Kona, they've been investing a lot of time, a lot of money into controlling this invasive species, and they need our help to keep it from getting worse and from spreading. Without this action, the two-line spittle bug will devastate Hawaii's rangelands and beef production. Let's look at this as a chance to be successful in stopping an invasive species from additional damage, which we know is very difficult. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Stephanie Easley from CGAPS. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Stephanie Easley with the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. Just want to echo the testimony provided um, by Department of Ag, by HISC, and by the other testifiers. This is a circumstance where an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Not only is it important to the ranching industry, as uh, Mr. Kishida mentioned, after the spittle bug destroys the grasses, then invasive species come in and those would have to be dealt with and remediated. So this upfront expenditure will end up saving money in the end. Thank you for consideration of our testimony. Thank you. Uh, Francis Brewer from Big Island Invasive Species Committee is in support. Guy Sellier, Hawaii Forest Industry Association in support. Larry Jeffs from Larry Jeffs Farms in support. Wayne Tanaka from Sierra Club in support, and also the following individuals are all in support. Uh, Janet Ashman, Chuck Shamira, Jimmy Greenwell, Beverly Heiser, Jacqueline Ambrose, Jimmy Gomes, Randy Cabral, Taylor Kellerman, Woody Child, Walter Boger, and Angela, Angelica Malone. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 2131? Members, any questions? Yes, Senator DeCoit. Uh, Department of Ag, please. Hey, Dex, Dex, thanks for being here. Dexter, how, how do you guys treat the spittle bug? Or what do you guys treat spittle bug with? Yeah, I can get the exact um, pesticide treatment, um, but there there are some some sprays that we do or we can use. Many times right now, the ranchers are taking that on themselves. And that's why this funding will really help to offset the cost of those treatments for our ranching community. So so you can only treat this with pesticides? Um, taking away habitat might also be a great alternative option. Um, like I think you mentioned last week, the clear cutting or a burn back type scenario. And I, and I understand that's a sensitive issue right now with, with Lahaina, but um, you know, under direct supervision with our counties, uh, county fire departments, this might be a, another option to take care of this problem. Sure. I, I'm just asking because you know I know that we've had two bo two boxes being emptied. So you know I, that I'm is trying my to figure fear. Out how do you combat this if we're gonna empty the toolbox of tools? Cor um, and and not going to be possible. And so that is some of the fear and in, in additional pesticide restrictions that while the department might be allowed in some of the um, carve outs again ranchers are the ones that are treating today and so they're not part of the department so how does this work for for that ranching community so so you saying that you guys will do the treat the treatment and not the ranchers if if this were to happen we'd we'd have to because we're the only ones that would be allowed to but then i would be coming back for more staff because i have yeah, one guy that can do treatment for it. on all of big island and that's for noxious weeds for pests I mean, it's so nowhere near enough people if we were to do that. So that is why we do need the tools in the toolbox today. So if we removed pesticides, 
what happens? Decimation, decimation mm -hmm. of, of our ranch lands specifically to this bill. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, question for Dexter. In your testimony, you said that you had a tentative agreement with the Florida Department of Ag to launch exploration for natural enemies at Correct. CLSB. So if you're unable to get to the $100,000 that you're requesting for the research program, what happens to that tentative agreement? Is it power? You know, we, we'd have to go back to the table to, to see how much free relationship building we can have with the university. Um, definitely sharing of knowledge, I think, will still happen. But there needs to be some direct funding for this project to test some of the biocontrol agents. Um, and so that is where some of the funding will be necessary. Okay. Thank you. Chair. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to agree on this, but like all of these invasive species, and um, we can have comments from everybody, time sensitive. If we let government go too slow, it, it may be wasted time. So I think we are in a time sensitive. Is that a fair statement from your perspective? Absolutely. Absolutely. Chelsea, could you come up, please? Uh, just respond to my, my statement, my comments, please. Yes, it, it's time sensitive. We're at a tipping point with a lot of these species like little fire ant and two line spittle bug is one of them. And it feels like, yeah, that's under control because we don't see it across the islands, but it's not. And if you go to the actual ranchers, which we've done site visits, because we do fund um, some of the research that's being done by um, the University of Hawaii and Mark Thorne's lab over there and seeing what these ranches are dealing with on a daily basis and not even wanting us to come to their ranch because they're embarrassed of what's happened to their very flush kukuyu grass and other foraging grasses over there being replaced by these woody, horrible invasive species that they have to spend a lot of money and a lot of time managing with other pesticides that they haven't been able to, to use. So yes, it's a problem and we've called it the silent invasion before because a lot of us in the public don't see it as a problem until it's at our doorstep but it is at a lot of people's doorstep. We're just not aware of it. And two-line spittle bug is one of those. Okay, I remember in dealing with the so-called fireweed, same deal. We had an opportunity when it was in a vault, very small area, but since it, it wasn't a catastrophe yet, we didn't do anything until it became a catastrophe. So, okay, I appreciate those comments. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is... Uh, House Bill 2133 HD1 establishes an invasive species grant pilot program to provide grants through DOA to individuals, businesses, and organizations for the eradication of invasive species on property located in Hawaii that is owned by the individual, business, or organization. First up, Department of Ag. The department stands on our business. Thank you, Dexter. Chelsea Arnott. Chair, the department will stand on their own. Thank you, Chelsea. Brian Miyamoto. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. And I promise, Chair, I'll start standing on more testimony. Uh, I just wanted to add to the conversation on the previous bill. Absolutely, we support this bill 100%. Um, not only are the invasive species damaging our farms and ranches, our fragile environment ecosystem, but they are costing the farmers and ranchers. So the more that they have to spend in addressing invasive species. The last time they really have to spend on growing the food, feed, fiber, fuel, and floriculture that we want in Hawaii. So to provide some resources for the invasive species that we need to stop, we need to stop talking about just managing and controlling and eradicate. We want to eradicate as we discussed with the last bill on the possibility with the two-line spittle bug. So again, all these invasive species bills are great. I think I report to this committee the 2002 LRB report on what it would cost Annually, the managed invasive species is $50 million. My understanding is uh, today's numbers would be $90 million. That is to, to address invasive species. If not, it is just going to be an endless cycle of trying to manage those that we have here while more and more come into the state of Hawaii. So again, uh, we, we need to provide the resources. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Uh, next is Guy Sellier from Hawaii Forest Industry Association. Uh, Wayne uh, in support. All of these are in support. Wayne Tanaka from Sierra Club. John Mitchell from Living Life Source Foundation. 
Kehalani Lum, Waihu Land, LLC in support, Sherry Pollock and Beverly Heiser in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on 2133? Members, questions? Just one, Chair. Senator DeCoy. De Dexter, please. So, Dexter, have you guys um, received requests um, from farmers and ranchers? Uh, actually, have you received requests for this type of assistance in the form of grants from individuals, businesses, and organizations for combating invasive species? And if so, how much was such a program at this cost? You know, we, we have received requests. I haven't totaled the, the amount that's being requested, um, but even simply putting together a program for Hawaii Island to combat little fire ants there and control it there, I think the a small program just for Hilo was going to cost us two hundred thousand. So what was what, the estimate? What, what would a small program for invasive, uh, I mean, uh, for cocky frogs cost? Oh, I'd have to get back to you on that one. Um, partly because the types of the the cost of even the the citric acid that we currently use, the food grade citric acid specifically, mm -hmm. um, has skyrocketed over the last year triple or quadruple in price. Um, and so just with that cost alone, not to mention trekking to the more uh, mountainous regions to control areas both in Palolo here or on Maui, um, I I'd have to get back to you. I'd have to get with our, our invasive species committees and others who are also actively working on this. So, so I know that in Maui, we partnered with the county and the county has purchased the citric acid or like farmers, in this case, the homeowners, have volunteered their times to help, you know, push back that area. I know it isn't as widespread yet as the big island. So, I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to suppress an area like that and then go backwards so that it doesn't keep spreading? What we've, I know we've done in Kauai is kind of circled them and then kind of yeah. squished them together and then to, to eradicate that way. Um, and so similar. So you think like the retaining, um, that retaining a wall would work? Um, you literally put this retaining. Um, oh, barrier, a physical barrier, barrier yeah, to, say, to, to do sorry. that. Sorry, I was watching too much of Trump this morning, but <laughs> you, know, was, you know, the, the Slightly barrier. different kind of wall. Maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you think that would help? I mean. It, it definitely could. Just creating that physical barrier so they, they stop spreading on, further. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So that is that is one option. I don't know if I'd be calling um, that organization to see their specs, but we could definitely <laughs> use a uh... scale it down a couple notches. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Okay. Uh, next measure: HB twenty one thirty four HD two appropriate funds to establish grant specialist positions within the Department of Ag. First up, on the back, next one. Thank you, Dexter Kishida, Department of Agriculture. The department uh, definitely supports this bill. Um, we and we are really thankful that one of the positions has made it into the House, uh, the House Finance draft of the budget. We just see that the opportunity is great, just with federal funds alone, uh, that these positions would fund itself in, in a year, in, in drawing down these both non-competitive and competitive federal funds. Thank you. Thank you. Warren Watanabe from Maui County Farm Bureau. In support, Michael Munakata Ulupono. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair, Richards, members of the committee. Michael Munakata here on behalf of Ulupono Initiative. In strong support of this measure, Chair. Uh, you know, I came before this committee and give a little bit of the, the data in the last, over the last month um, to really emphasize the importance of something so small. <laughs> um, Department of Ag is asking for three positions at $300,000 in this bill. Um, Dexter's right, the, the House did pass a position with, with $100,000 attached to it. Um, we're hoping to, to add two more positions. Um, you know, Dexter said one year before they pay themselves out. I, I believe that's actually much less. Um, I think, um, as described in, in a previous hearing, there's $14 million right, right now that's just available for the Department of Act to go get. This is money that's set aside for state government agencies or departments to go and get. 
So 300,000, you know, investment to get 14 million just this year with the potential uh, for future opportunities. That's, that's again, I, I've said this before, it's nearly 50 times return on investment in that first year. So I, I challenged DOA a little bit to say that it would actually be much better than that. Um, the private sector has stepped up to try to help in, in different instances, but there's money that's available for government agencies to go get. This is DOA money. We just got to go get it. And that's where this bill comes in. And that's why it's super important to create the capacity within the Department of Ag. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brian Miyamoto, Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have our written testimony and support. I just want to follow up in saying that we understand that the legislature has very difficult decisions this year, fiscally because of Maui and other other things, but mostly because of Maui. Um, however, this is a mere ask. Again, the House draft asked for one position, 100,000. We'd like to see three positions at 300,000. That 300,000 can be leveraged for millions so that we won't have to depend on the state for all of those millions of dollars that we hope to get from the federal government. We think it's a, a, a small cost for a huge investment for agriculture. So we do stand in strong support, uh, understanding the difficult decisions that the legislature will have to make uh, as far as budgetary items this year. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Yang Oh, with the Local Food Coalition. In support, Hunter Hevelin, Hawaii Farmers Union. Thank you, Chair Hunter Hevelin, on behalf of Hawaii Farmers Union. Uh, we'll stand on our testimony in strong support of this measure. As we've seen over the past number of years, uh, philanthropic entities and nonprofits have been able to be quite successful in bringing in, in yeah, yeah, funds yeah. to support our food and agricultural sectors. And we think it's a uh, high time for government to learn from some private sector activities and uh, adopt the same practice. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Next is David Arakawa from uh, Land Use Research Foundation in support. Nicole Galase, Cattlemen's Council in support. Eric Tenoy from HFNA is in support. Ronald Wiedenbach from the Aquaculture and Aquaponics Association in support. Caitlin Shimizu from Hawaii Food and Policy Purple Maia Foundation in support. And the following individuals all in support. Nancy Redfeather, Jacqueline Ambrose, Jay Ashman, Mark Philipson, Randy Cabral, Eileen Ye, and Angelica Malone. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 2134? Members, any questions? Senator Richards. Yeah, Dexter. Deputy, how many grant writers do you have on staff right now? Zero as a grant writer. Um, to the point that uh, chair even has to take time out of after the regular work day to, to help the department apply. Okay. No further questions. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, chair. So, how, you, got, you guys, how many positions do you have open? Um, we do have a hundred and no, 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 for so, grant oh, writing. Zero. We, guys, we don't have a grant writer position. You, oh, you guys don't even have one grant writer Correct. position. Correct. Wow. That's what we're requesting. Okay. Yeah. Message received. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Straightforward. Next up is HB 2136 HD2, requiring the Department of Ag to establish and implement a pesticide inspection program to increase compliance with the proper use of restricted use pesticides by agricultural producers, ensure the continued prohibition on the use of corporate purifos and inform the public of the most recent pesticide inspection results for ag producers. First up, Department of Ag. Thank you, Dexter Kishida, Department of Agriculture. Department uh, stands in our comments. Uh, just wanted to point out a few things. One, I think as I shared last week, I, I fully appreciate that the department has a few roles that we play and one of them is to protect consumers and the general public. And, and in this bill, that, that's really what it does. It helps, while we do have some of the authorities listed, um, this definitely emphasizes the fact that we need to protect our greater communities. And so that way, we, the responsible users can continue to control pests with, with the necessary tools. One thing that I would like to request a change in this bill is that our pesticide branch 
oversees all pesticide use, not just agricultural pesticide use. So to be fair and in line with what the EPA um, direction is that we all pesticide users uh, be included instead of just agricultural users. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair Brian Miyamoto, on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Chair, we do have Janet Ashwin online. Okay, thank you. Janet? Aloha, Chair. Aloha, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Richards, and members of the committee. I'm Janet Ashman, testifying on behalf of Hawaii Farm Bureau. We respectfully offer these comments. First, I'm happy to point out that DOA already has a pesticide inspection program and implements it. Um, federal, both federal and Hawaii state laws and regulations on pesticide use are exhaustive, and they carry enormous penalties and potential jail time for violations. Pesticide Branch already conducts inspections in response to every complaint it receives, and it also periodically inspects all users of restricted use pesticides. Second, the bill raises questions of due process because it appears to require, as Jester just said, the department to make public its investigations before they are concluded. It applies only to farmers' use of pesticides without any justification. It ignores all other users of pesticides, such as termite and structural pest control, public health use, conservation use, and the DOA data on pesticide use violations does not justify singling out agriculture. I do want to point out one more thing, and that is that not even California, which has the most comprehensive pesticide reporting program in the world, requires this level of reporting. And California, of course, has significantly larger resources and a huge agricultural industry and significantly greater volume of pesticide use. In fact, um, California only produces an annual summary of information that can only be accessed by the public several years after the pesticides are applied. DOA doesn't have comparable resources. Farm Bureau believes that any additional funding allocated to the pesticide branch would be better spent to attract and retain qualified branch staff to fulfill its current responsibilities, including outreach and education, review and completion of new and safer registrations to keep up with new and more devastating pests, complaint response, inspections, and enforcement. Thank you for your continued support of Hawaii's Act community. Thank you, Janet. Hunter Hevelin from Hawaii Farmers Union. Thank you, Chair. Hunter Hevelin here on behalf of Hawaii Farmers Union. We send in support of the intent of this bill and would like to highlight some of the, the key measures. Well, Pyrophos in particular had previously uh, undergone a ban from the EPA that was subsequently uh, overrode after significant changes in the, you could say, the, the structure of our court system. We believe that the continued prohibition of that restricted use pesticide or that previously banned pesticide would signal um, the intentions of our agricultural industry and our state overall to privilege community protection and environmental health over, uh, we could say, the shifting tides of uh, political persuasions within our court system. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Hunter. And Frederick from HAPA in support. Chris Caulfield from the Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. Danny Kup Choi from Hawaii Crop Improvement Association has comments. Clayton Kubo. On Zoom, Clayton. Uh, Clayton Kubo, I'm a Kauai. Oh, please support this measure. Uh, I found out in the past that four companies denied inspection. And then later on, I find out that, oh, uh, their license can be taken away. So in the end, it's like, it's like this. All I want is for me is to not to get impacted. Okay. Hey, they like spray, go ahead and go spray. But if they're going to be impacting me and my family, I don't think that's right. You know, it's like you guys, they always said to me in the past, oh, the label is the law. Okay. Well, it seems like they wasn't following the label because last year, the results came out and had 60, I think it was 65 pages of repeat offenders of pesticide violations. So in the end, you know, 
I heard it all for all those, what now is 24 years. And, and I'm going to reiterate, if they want to spray, go spray. But please do not impact me. Mahalo. Aloha. Thank you, Clayton. And the following individuals are all in support. D.A. McClintock, Jacqueline Ambrose, Kayoni Shizuma, Sherry Pollock, and Beverly Heiser. Anyone else wishing to testify on HP 2136? Members, any questions? Questions, please. Senator DeCoy. Department of A. Dexter, to what extent you guys already do what is called for in this bill? You know, much of it we do. Uh, we do go out and inspect, and it's it's through an EPA agreement that we we are the ones tasked to to ensure compliance um, with pesticide laws. This does codify it in in HRS in a slightly in another section very clearly. Okay. Then, um, as as Mr. Kubo said, how many repeat offenders do you have? I'd have to get the list. Um, I believe he, what Clayton said uh, in in some prior testimony. You know what? I, I won't. I won't say the number because I don't know. Off, I don't know the the exact number. I'll have to get back to you on how many repeat offenders. And then, is it um, when you, when you get the list, can you um, separate out restricted use and other uses? Of, Most definitely. Of violations. Yep. And then, what would it cost? Well, how much is it actually costing you guys now? Um, and then what will it cost us in new money if the bill passes? We don't expect any additional funding needed to implement the bill as written. Um, now, if, and, and actually with some of the, a bill that was passed last year that increases the fines, um, which goes into a revolving fund, that's one way that we could in the future also fund additional education and um, inspectors as needed. Um, but the goal of that is really, it goes down, right? That through education with the community and, and users that there would be no fines in the end. Or there'll be no fines in the end. Because everybody will be using it like it should. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Sure. Senator mm -hmm. Richards. Um, <clears throat> some of the comments that have been made is it should not just be for agriculture, it be for all users. If that were the case, and you being the designate through EPA, how many positions do you have now? How many might that take? Which, and then what would be the economic costs? The, the, again, we, we currently do respond to complaints as is and to, to the broad community. And that's why the alignment of the bill to include language to saying all pesticide users is, is I think, needed in this. Um, I do realize it opens up a different kind of worms to different uh, industries as well. But um, my team already goes out during complaints or whenever there is a complaint to follow up and do an investigation. Um, so we don't expect the need for additional funds yet. Okay. <clears throat> Because this is human health, is this tied in? Do you work or have a working relationship with Department of Health? Is there a... My branch manager um, came from Department of Health, so not only because of clean air and some other mm -hmm. parts of DOH, um, but also just a great working relationship with his, his former team and, and others. So we have that dash line between... Absolutely. Got it. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. Thank you, Chair. Chair, sure, one more question. Yes, I'm... Um, mm -hmm. For uh, Hunter. Is Hunter on? Yes, Senator. Hi, Hunter. Um, I, I noticed that um, you guys support this bill, um, but I also noticed you supported HB 2131 in regards to uh, the spittle bug. Uh, I, I, I kind of question, you know, they, they're I using think... pesticides there as well, so I'm kind of confused that. Yeah. You're supporting the HB 2131 relating to two-line spittle bug, and then you also support say, the, prop, the compliance and proper use. So what, what is that? Well, I would say, you know, we have a diverse membership and that oh, there okay. is a, a belief amongst 
I would say some that the, the application of agricultural chemicals, including pesticides, is a critical component of viable ag operations. But I think all would agree that transparency around use and effective regulation, particularly of restricted use pesticides or things that are banned mostly internationally and had previously been banned nationally, is uh, are, are important aspects of conserving so, not just so environmental health, so, but human So you health. agree with the transparency part, correct? Shucks. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think in, in the case of, of the particular um, RUP that are previously banned for Pyrophos, okay. that we would thank certainly be, be interested in constraining thank the use of that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Chair. Moving on to uh, HB 2139, HD1 requires the Department of Ag to establish and implement an invasive species inspection placard program to enhance the control, removal, and eradication of invasive species on the premises of an ag producer and inform the public of the most recent invasive species inspection results for ag producers. First up, Department of Ag. Thank you, Dexter Kishida, Department of Agriculture. The department respectfully opposes this measure. We support the intent. We know and, and really appreciate what um, the measure is trying to do. Just right now, the, the cost is gonna be immense to create a program like this, um, a placarding program. And if we say we're gonna marry the Department of Health, it doesn't quite align line by line because Department of Health governs areas that can be very controlled and, and our farms are not. And so, in it, and, and so if we're going to do a placard system of a ye red, yellow, green or something similar, um, due to the variables, we're going to need not only inspection staff to go out for invasive or for um, infestations, but also, according to statute, our job will be to also to help them solve this problem. So also treatment staff will need to be increased. And I um, thank you very much for the for giving us the time to testify, and I'll be here for any questions. Thank you. Chelsea or not, Illinois. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Chelsea Arnon on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and Program Support for our Hawaiian Basis Species Council. Um, the department stands on its testimony providing comments. Um, we do support the placard program and you know tools that can help us mitigate the spread of invasive species like little fire ant and coconut rhinoceros beetle. Our comments are based on just the broad sweep of agricultural producers and really wanting to narrow the focus down on what we know of, of the high risk pathways um, like the horticulture trade. So mahalo for the opportunity. I'm around for any questions. Thank you. Brian Miyamoto. <coughs> Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, we submitted testimony providing comments. Um, again, we support any efforts to address invasive species. We applaud the introducer of this measure uh, to come up with a program that, that maybe they think may help. However, uh, we're concerned with the practical nature of this program. We talked about spittlebug. Um, how do we contain spittlebug like this placard system proposes do, like with restaurants. Restaurants are enclosed. Uh, they do placard system based on temperature control and other foodborne illness or food safety issues. How do we do that with farms and ranches that are wide open? How to prevent if we are mitigating on our ranch or farm it from coming back on? How do we get rid of that red, yellow, and get back to the green? Again, this is way different than a restaurant. A restaurant's a lot easier to, to manage a placard system uh, restaurants do need to register with the State Department of Health in order to become a restaurant. Uh, we don't know how this will be executed and implemented. It just doesn't seem like it's it's possible. And again, it's addressing only the farmers and ranchers, we believe. Uh, but you could have a farm and you could do whatever you need to do to, to address the invasive species on your property. Your next door neighbor doesn't and then it comes back and then now you're back in the red. Um, so again, we do have concerns. We do uh, appreciate any effort to address invasive species. We just don't think a placard system is, is going to do the job. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Brian. Stephanie Easley, CGAPS. You're on mute, Stephanie. Thank you, sorry, having some mic trouble. Good 
Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Stephanie Easley with the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. Um, we'll stand on our written testimony echoing the comments of the previous three testifiers that this year with the budget, um, you know, there's not going to be much money. We need to target the highest risk pathways, which is the nursery trade potentially, other pathways that really will spread the pests rapidly around the islands. Thank you for consideration of our testimony. Thank you. Hunter Hevelin with Hawaii Farmers Union. Thank you, Chair Hunter Hevelin here on behalf of Hawaii Farmers Union. Uh, we will uh, re reiterate our written comments, noting the considerable issues with this bill as written. While we support the intent of obviously of controlling uh, invasive species, we would like to see it the efforts directed to the, the vectors that many of the prior testifiers have have noted would add that as as written, it could be interpreted to mean that a, a agricultural operation would not be able to remove its its red placard, for example, in the absence of actually eradicating all invasive species on their par parcel, which other land managers, namely the conservation industry, I think could attest is a very tall order. Um, and so unless we want to see our, our rural and farm communities covered with a red sea, uh, I would say that we seek to see this deferred. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne Tanaka, Sierra Club in support. Jacqueline Ambrose in support. Sherry Pollock in support. Beverly Heiser in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Any questions, members? Just one quick question. Senator DeCoy. Dexter, please. So, Dexter, help me understand, how would on placard program help us enhance the control and removal and eradication of invasive species on the premises of an egg producer? Great question. I think it, the placard really just provides the transparency to the consumer that they're purchasing or not purchasing because there might be a quarantine on the on the farm, uh, a possibly infected or or a, from a place that is possibly infected or infect, infested, sorry. Um, and so in that way, it limits the spread because people won't move product off of that farm. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it squashes the infestation on site. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, quick follow-up. Senator Richards. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thanks, Dexter. I remember on the Big Island, I think it was bunchy top the bananas. Banana bunch. And we had all these signs go up and people wondered what the signs meant. And so I kind of see this as the same way um, in committing resources to something like this. I'm not sure it's going to be that's... immense resources for the outcome may not match what goes in. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, because I know those signs didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Next is HB 2390 HD2. Requiring the PUC to explicitly consider the effect of the state's reliance on fossil fuels on life cycle greenhouse gas emissions and gives the PUC the discretion to require a life cycle greenhouse gas emissions assessment for energy projects that do not involve combustion fuel. First up is Michael Angelo with DCCA. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Mickey Knox. I'm a staff attorney for the Division of Consumer Advocacy. I just briefly wanted to explain our testimony. We do support this bill. However, in the last round of amendments, we think we might have spotted a potential loophole where it may uh, put gas utility projects into this new discretionary bucket. So we've offered uh, some further amendments on the language. Um, we've offered two versions. I wanted to explain that too. We just, we don't know quite what the scope that you'd like to have in this new discretionary bucket. But the through line between those two versions of amendments that we're suggesting is to keep the calibration of this new discretionary bucket of projects in that new language. We think the potential problem might have been because the last round of amendments put a qualifier on the general case. And that's what might create a possible loophole for gas utility projects. I'm here for any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is the Hawaii State Energy Office. Uh, 
Uh, Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Monique Schaefer, Decarbonization Program Manager for the Hawaii State Energy Office. Uh, we stand on our testimony in strong support. Um, I do believe the language should remain as is. And um, I want to thank you guys for adopting our recommended language in the last iteration. Uh, available for any questions. Mahalo. Thank you. Leo Asuncion from PUC. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Leo Asuncion, uh, Chair of the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, we'll stand on a written testimony in strong support of the bill. Uh, this is something that uh, we have been working on through a number of years now, uh, getting to the point of almost requiring every project that comes before us uh, to have a greenhouse gas analysis done. Uh, we, go, we went back and took a look at the original intent. Uh, it was a, that was at a time when we were trying to encourage more renewable resources, which anecdotally, if you will, uh, does reduce greenhouse gases, right? Getting away from fossil fuel and the use of that. Uh, so, but we've gotten to the point now that even a solar project will require a greenhouse gas analysis, which does cost the developer money, does cost Hawaiian Electric money. And from a project standpoint, right, that ultimately ends up uh, being borne, the cost of that is being borne by the ratepayer because it passes all the way through. So we're looking for the flexibility uh, to decide, uh, have the commission decide and take a look at whether or not, kind and the bill does limit it to if, the, if, if there is burning of fuel, then it would be required. But if it doesn't require, right, it's generation being genera a project generating energy uh, from uh, non-combustible or non-fuel sources, right, that we would then decide whether or not a greenhouse gas analysis uh, would be necessary. Uh, wanted to touch upon a little bit about um, the testimony from the consumer advocate. I think we can work with the consumer advocate on that. I did, I, I read, did read the testimony um, just off the cuff, uh, just looking at it. I'm okay with either one of their amendments. Uh, we just have to figure out which one would probably work the best. And the intent was not to uh, put, you know, the, the gas company, should they come into us with a project that they have, right, to suddenly exempt them, if you will, from a greenhouse gas analysis, I think. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Um, next is uh, Leah Laramie, the State Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. Aloha, Vice Chair, Chair, members of the committee, Leah Laramie, the Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. Um, we stand in support of this bill, um, and you have our testimony. If you have any questions, I'm available. Mahalo. Thank you, Leah. Henry Curtis. And support James Abraham with Hawaiian Electric. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is James Abraham. I'm testifying on behalf of Hawaiian Electric in strong support of House Bill 2390HD2. We believe the current bill language identifies the correct scope for the greenhouse gas analysis and we'll stand on our written testimony in support. I'm available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Frederick Rudell from the Hawaii Clean Power Alliance in support. Jacqueline Ambrose in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 2390? Members, any questions? <laughs> Senator Rhodes. Uh, for um, Climate Change and Adaptation Commission. So at, at this point, then, I, I mean, sometimes these, uh, sometimes what's uh, green and what's not is um, not entirely intuitive. So do we have enough data at this point to say that certain kinds of projects, it, they, they are just sort of automatically green? I think it's really case by case basis on how they go through the life cycle, which is why these analyses are really important, because there are certain projects, let's say biofuels, where, you know, the processes are maintaining the land, they're regenerative, they're not bringing imports out from, you know, other places um, to produce these things, and then they're capturing um, any emissions and um, not letting those go out into the atmosphere, um, whereas others 
could have a lot of inputs. So it, so, it would really balance So requiring that. the PUC to do the lifetime, the, um, the life cycle greenhouse gas emissions analysis, that you view that as more uh, sufficient to be sure that we're not getting greenwashed. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, Chair. Okay. All right, moving on to HB 2590 HD1. Appropriates funds for food bank purchases from local farmers to be expended by the Department of Ag. Your request for proposals. Department of Ag. The Department of Ag. Thank you. Thank you, Dexter. Thank you. Addison Bulusan, council member from Kauai, in support. Michael Munakata, Ilipono. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Michael Munakata here on behalf of Ulipono Initiative. Uh, in strong support of this measure, Chair. Um, a lot of great uh, collaboration between our, our community feeding efforts, um, emergency community feeding efforts through the food banks and our local farming community. Um, I think I've testified with this, this stat before, uh, actually more on the value added side, but I think it's relevant here that farmers um, experience about 10 to 40% of wasted products. And that's just the nature of what can go to market and what can't. If we find an additional market for that, we are supporting our local producer and providing for community feeding efforts across the state. It's a very important measure for our farmers as are our whole bunch, but I think that this is also one of those bills where it's that triple win of keeping money here locally, uh, supporting our farmers with additional markets, and then also feeding the, the food insecure, which are continuing to be present here within our communities. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Amy Miller from Hawaii Food Bank. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, <clears throat> members of the committee, Amy Miller here with Hawaii Food Bank. We stand on our written testimony in strong support of this bill. As Micah said, <clears throat> we see this as a real win-win. Every dollar does double duty, both helping support our local farmers and getting food to those we serve. If I may, I'd like to just read an email we received from a participant in one of these programs. And she says, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to whoever started this program. I have three kids, age six, two, and one, and work two jobs and therefore do not qualify for food stamps. After monthly expenses for rent, gas, electric, and diapers, it leaves very little for food. I go to food banks to make ends meet. This program literally changed our lives. It changed the way we eat. I made so many amazing dishes using the fresh vegetables we were gifted with. I've truly never felt healthier. I made smoothies for my family every day. My babies would eat poi and cereal every morning. My middle son finally gained weight. After being denied any assistance for so long, finally I qualified for some sort of help and it's just the biggest relief to have that help be such healthy and wholesome foods. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I hope this program continues or others like it because it really has made such a difference in my family's health and well-being. Aloha. Thank you. I'm here to answer any, Thank you. any questions. Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We're in strong support of this measure. Uh, and there's no question or no doubt on the merits of this program and the great work that our food banks are doing across the state. I would just like to note, Chair, that uh, again, the House draft of 18, HB 1800 uh, did not include uh, any funding for the food bank. The original request from the administration was $7,200,000. Uh, the governor did send out a GM, GM5, asking for additional support to add uh, $1.28 million to make it a $2 million request for the admin budget. However, that request did come down a little late and ultimately the House did not even include the 720, they did not concur. So we are humbly and respectfully asking for at least $2 million for this program. I believe uh, previous requests were up to $5 million. Uh, again, you heard win, 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 win. It's a win all the way around. Uh, so we do respectfully ask that this committee consider uh, at appropriate at a minimum $2 million for the Farm to Food Bank program. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Brian. Hunter Hedlund, Hawaii Farmers Union. Thank you, Chair. Hunter Hedlund on behalf of Hawaii Farmers Union. 
will testify in strong support of this measure, uh, one that we have advocated for over the past number of years, and would direct uh, readers to the, the second page of our testimony, which highlights, I think, a few important uh, amendments that would better protect and, and place this program as, as a permanent one within the Department of Agriculture. Alternative versions of the bill, both in previous years and uh, in the, during this session, namely HB 2137, would have uh, placed the program in statute as opposed to just a single year of funding, which we think is cr of critical importance, that this is not just a reaction to Lahaina, but a, a critical and sustained need, both in our communities and one that can continue to support our agricultural development. Additional aspects would highlight that not this funding could be used not just for the purchase of food, but also for the other costs incurred by food banks, which the uh, amendments I offer would also define, um, as well as allowing for funding to be utilized for the transportation and storage of these local products, as well as, uh, I think, finally, conceivably using a system similar to that used by the Department of Labor Office of Community Services, which uses the Emergency Food Assistance Program and their allocation of resources by county as a mechanism to determine which uh, you know, the amounts that would go to a given food bank as defined by U.S. code. That would reduce the uh, administrative burden on the Department of Agriculture, which currently could put things to RFP, and the absence of any definition of a food bank currently in the bill would conceivably have the onslaught of the hundreds of amazing uh, community feeding operations errantly uh, spend their time in application for this. So we seek to streamline and to embed this in statute. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Nate Hicks from Hawaii Public Health Institute. Law Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Nate Hicks, Hawaii Public Health Institute. Uh, support, uh, we stand in support of this bill and want to highlight how important fresh produce is for the health of all of us, uh, including and very importantly, our low income residents who depend on the food bank system for a lot of their food. Uh, you can go to a lot of these food pantries uh, and the lines for those that include fresh produce as part of their giveaway are huge, hours long lines. Uh, just for people waiting to get this fresh produce. That's not the same situation for the uh, food pantries that don't offer the fresh produce. It's in high demand. Uh, families really do need this, and this bill will allow more families uh, more variety and more options to choose from uh, when it comes to fresh produce. Mahal. Thank you, Nate. Jay Anna from the Young Brothers in support, Sherry Pollock in support, Cole Wu from the Hawaii Children's Action Network speaks in support. All of the following are in support. Sylvia Delena from Pele Lani Farm. Kristen Albrecht from the Food Basket Inc. Hawaii Islands Food Bank in support. Susan Roberts Emery in support. Emi Matsura, Keopu Rilitz, Non Kurisu. All in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Members, any questions? Oh. Oh, I'm stuck together here. oh, yes, and there are more. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Caitlin Shimisu from the Hawaii Food Policy Purple Maya Foundation. Lauren Zervil, is she here? From uh, Hawaii Food Industry Association. Uh, Chamber of Commerce of uh, Chamber of Sustainable Commerce in support, and also Stephanie Austin, Nancy Redfeather, Marilyn Nick, Lorna Holmes, Roger Wall Raven, Jacqueline Ambrose, B.A. McClintock, Irina Bliss, Keala Fung, Ariel Starbright, Dennis O'Shea, Patricia Blair, Edward Dedeo, Nanea Lowe, Thomas Brandt, Ali Heyman, Susan Douglas, Danielle Guillon, Stancy Alapai, Janice Palma Glenny, Richard, Charla David Tevis, Gwen Rodriguez, Shannon Rudolph, Nahilani Parsons, Kiani Otsuka, Emily Garland, Michelle Nahipali, Timothy Wiley, Sherry Fowl, and Patty Arcistavrakis. All in support. Okay. Yes, there were 50 in support and none opposed. 
So any questions, members? Moving on then to HB 2619. Hmm. Relating to Ag Biosecurity, appropriate funds for the biosecurity program of the Department of Ag to develop and implement projects for clean plant material, ag treatments, diagnostics, and pest management. First up, Department of Ag. Thank you, Dexter Kennedy, <laughs> Department of Agriculture. The department stands in our testimony in strong support. Um, and the original request being 2.5 million uh, we realize that this is not the year to go in for 20, though that would be great um, for future years. But we just know that the added capacity that this bill provides would definitely strengthen our work on invasive species or against invasive species. Thank you. Thank you. Chelsea Arnott from DLNR. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Chelsea Arnon on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and Program Support for our Hawaiian Basin Species Council. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony and support and I just want to highlight the importance of biosecurity and really focusing efforts at our ports of entry and there's so many pests on the horizon that we don't even know about and just adding more funding to build up capacity at the Department of Agriculture. I mean, they're our first line of defense against something like Africanized honeybees or red imported fire ant, these major pests coming in. And of course, there's a whole heap of invasive plants out there that we don't have. So this is really needed and timely for the Department of Agriculture. So mahalo for the opportunity. Thank you, Chelsea. Mayor Richard Bisson in support for Maui. Warren Watanabe from Maui County Farm Bureau in support. Hunter Hevelin, Hawaii Farm Bureau, Hawaii Farmers Union. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we'll send it over to the testimony support. Thank like you, Michael Munakata from uh, Ulupono. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Michael Munakata here on behalf of Ulupono Initiative. In strong support of this measure, um, it's refreshing to see <laughs> A bill like this, which is a, a holistic approach at uh, addressing invasive species, um, you know, providing the resources necessary for the Department of Ag to do its work is going to be extremely important. Um, you know, we can listen to each invasive species bill with every pest that's out there. Um, in reality, we need to give the tools and the funding to the Department of Ag to deal with all the various ones that we currently have and that are on the horizon as discussed with previous testifiers. So giving that resource and that flexibility for DOA to really address things in the moment and not having to come here every session and tell you about every pest that's come up is gonna be very important. It'll make it a lot more efficient and it's a great use of funding. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Micah. Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. <laughs> Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of Hawaii Farm Bureau and apparently Hunter Hevelin, uh, honorary member of the Farm Bureau. <laughs> um, we're in strong support of this measure. Uh, the biosecurity program is critically important. Funding for DOA is critically important uh, to prevent more invasive species from coming in. We need to stop the cycle. Uh, we agree with uh, Hiss, with Ms. Arnott, about the importance of protecting our ports of entry. Um, Today's hearing, there's 12 bills. Seven of them are specific to invasive species. That's how bad of an issue or a problem it is for not just agriculture, but for an entire state. We would like the legislature to at some point consider quite possibly creating a division of invasive species. Not a new department. I think those, there's been some discussion about that, but maybe within the Department of Agriculture, its own division of invasive species. I think the problem has gotten so big that it warrants uh, more dedication to prevent, control, eradicate all of the above for invasive species. So we are in strong support of this measure. Again, understanding the challenges of this year's budget. Um, uh, 2.5 was the original request, as the deputy said. Uh, I think in finance, it went up to 20 million was the request. Uh, In-house agriculture, when the Farm Bureau was asked the, the amount that we should put into the, the appropriation, we actually said 90 million. We're going to hold that line where if that's what uh, the legislature's own report said, then that's what we should be advocating for. We should ask for what it takes to address invasive species. Uh, but we are realistic. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. 
Thank you, Brian. David Arakawa from uh, LERF in support. Danny Cup Choi from uh, Hawaii Crop Improvement Association in support. And all the following are, are in support. The Cattlemen's Council, Nic Nicole Galassi, Nancy Redfeather with Ka'ohana Onapua, Eric Tenoy with HFNA, Guy Sellier with the Hawaii Forest Industry Association, Larry Jeffs from Larry Jeffs Farm, Arnold Wiedenbach from the Hawaii Aquaculture and Aquaponics Association, and the following individuals, John Gordinas, Jacqueline Ambrose, Jay Ashman, Eileen Ye, Randy Cabral, and Angelica Malone. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 2619? Members, any questions? Senator yeah. Richards. Yeah, thanks. Um, Dexter and Chelsea, you come up, because I don't know who's going to answer this. Chelsea will. What is that? We're not. Or not. Or not. Or not. I've not. heard it before. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Mm. Dexter, are not. Is that what you're saying? Uh, question uh, on the serious side. What's the estimate of number of invasive species each year coming into our state? Do you have an estimate on that? Um, so, Aloha. <laughs> Vice Chair, members of the committee, thank you for that question. Chelsea Arnott on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, the best estimate that we have where there was a holistic approach to inspections taken was a Kahului assessment in 2002 where Department of Agriculture did 100% inspections at the airport when they were in doing airport improvements. Um, and out of that report came that there's at least one new plant disease or insect being introduced to the state every year. And that's at Kahului Airport. That's not even our main hub of transportation. So if we did something like that, they call them bio blitzes and did this 100% inspection at our Honolulu Airport, that number would be grossly larger than one new insect and plant disease every day. That's just a huge every number. Every day or every? Sorry, every day. It's every day. I apologize. Every day. Every day. Yes. Why not? And <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> uh, and I'm happy to share that report with the committee so you can review it because it does break down what they found during that assessment. Yeah, I'd ask then if you could send it to the chair, then we can. Of course. Them yes. So thank you. We appreciate that. Quick okay. question. Quick question. Um, so, so Dexter, um, so the purpose of the bill is to appropriate funds for biosecurity program of the department to develop and implement projects to increase local ag production and to lessen the entry of pests and prohibited or restricted organisms without a permit brought into the state on imported ag, or ag goods. What kind of projects would you develop and implement and how much would this program cost us? So the 2.5 million actually funds a few things. Something that with the program that Chelsea just mentioned, it's time for, to, for us to do it again. Okay. This is a while ago, um, and to do it more than just at Kahului, to do this across the on every island. Um, the other piece that will fund, as you said, is the product replacement. Is identifying what are the products through these blitzes that are coming in hot, and let's stop bringing those in and grow that here or raise that here, and really help incentivize the industry to make those changes to to do that. So that's the two parts that we're working, the primary two parts that we're working on in the 2.5 mil. So it's 2.5 total or? Total. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, thank Chair. You. Thank you. HB 2546, HD1, allows for the use of fine mesh nets for the protection of plants against invasive species. Requires the Department of Ag to establish a registration program for purchasers of fine mesh nets in the state. <coughs> First up, Department of Ag. The Department of Land and Natural Resources. Chelsea Arnott, DLNR. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, uh, Senator Rhodes, Chelsea Arnott, on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, we stand on a written testimony in support. Um, we really need more tools in the toolbox for coconut rhinoceros beetle management, especially here on Oahu, where we're really past eradication and we're just working at containment. And we need our community members just to have 
some more tools that they can use to manage coconut rhinoceros beetle on their properties. Um, right now, there's pesticides that have restrictions on where and how they can use them. Also using drones to treat the, uh, the crowns of the trees. So we just don't have great, easy to use tools. These mesh nets could be one of those tools we can give to community members. Um, but also just wanting to make sure that it's not so restrictive. I, I do understand Department of Agriculture's testimony in that it could be considered a, um, uh, restricted for pest use and there are other users of mesh nets well beyond what is for pest control so just making sure we're not being too restrictive um, for our fishermen and fisherwomen and all all the other agricultural um, uses of mesh nets mahalo thank you brian miyamoto Hawaii farm bureau thank you chair the Hawaii farm bureau listed out expert testimony and support thank you keopu relitz office of Hawaiian affairs Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Kaylee Nixon. I am standing in for Kyoku Relitz. Um, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs will stand on our written testimony. And thank you for the opportunity. What's in support? Regina Gregory, there's comments. And the following are all. Oh, that's 25 minutes. Okay. Um, Jacqueline Ambrose is in support. Anyone else wishing to testify? Please. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I apologize for our late testimony. My name is Ian Ross, and I'm testifying on behalf of the Waianae Coast Conference of Health Center. Um, we are in strong support of this measure. And I believe as we were hearing from other testifiers, we see this as another tool in the toolbox that can be deployed by the community to be proactive supporting uh, coconut trees, uh, especially against the coconut rhinoceros beetle. Uh, I often get asked uh, what uh, interest does the Waianae Coast Conference of Health Center have in this issue? Well, we look at this as a comprehensive health issue and supporting the ecology, the local food systems and the culture of the native Hawaiian peoples goes very uh, in line with our view of comprehensive health and protecting the culture. We've taken the proactive move of actually starting the largest coconut nursery in the state. We're aiming for 1200 trees with diverse lineages to protect the future of these trees. We already use nets, but we're not able to use the fine mesh nets. And that means we're always having to go up and deal with them as, as these problems come up with the coconut rhinoceros beetles attacking the crown of the coconut trees. And we just believe this additional tool could be readily deployed to make things a lot easier and to continue the vision of what we're attempting to do to protect these trees. Um, I'll also add that we see this as tying in very much with our mission with public health. And we employ the chair and members of the committee to vote favorably in this measure. And we uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to testify in strong support. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Members, any questions? Moving on, HB 2644 relating to Little Fire Ants, appropriates funds to support the Hawaii Ant Lab in mitigating the effects of Little Fire Ants in the state. First up, Chelsea or not. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Chelsea Arnon on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and Program Support for our Hawaiian Invasive Species Council. Um, I mean, I feel like this legislative session is just little fire ants. There's so many bills out there currently looking at how to address little fire ants. Um, and definitely the number one issue is we need more funding. We need more resources so we can have more bodies on the ground doing the management of little fire ant, especially on these islands where we're just seeing a huge explosion of infestations, um, not only here on Oahu, but also on Kauai and on Maui. And we also need ongoing management for Hawaii Island and being able to have extension services to really support those farms and agricultural producers on how to manage it on their property. We have the treatment methods, we have the survey methods, they're effective, we just don't have the people to be able to implement them across the state. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Department of Ag. Thank you. Our and our Thank you. Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau was down on its written testimony and strong support. Thank you. Stephanie Easley from CGAPS. 
Stephanie Easley, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Member of the Committee. My name is Stephanie Easley with CEAPS. We'll stand on our testimony in strong support of the funding. Thank you, Stephanie. Hunter Hevelin, Hawaii Farmers Union. Thank you, Chair. We'll stand on uh, our testimony in support of this measure. Thank you. And also, the following are all in support Nancy Redfeather, uh, Ohana Onapua, Tim Lyons from the Subcontractors Subtract Association of Hawaii. Francis Brewer from Big Island Invasive Species Committee, Wayne Tanaka from Sierra Club, Jacqueline Ambrose, Jay Ashman, and Beverly Heiser. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Members, any questions? Yeah, just one for Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea there's no um, money, um, no appropriation amount specified. How much will you guys need to support the whole year? So for the Hawaii Ant Lab, we are looking at around 1.6 million is the ask to fully support that program currently as its staff, but also increase it by seven positions. Um, and then this is in conversations with the manager from the Hawaii Ant Lab. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Finally, on HB 2337, the last measure on this agenda replaces representatives from the sugar and pineapple industries with representatives of the coffee and diversified ag industries on the Advisory Committee on Pesticides. First up is the AG's office. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Kelsey Nagata, Deputy Attorney General, providing comments on HB 2337 HD1. Uh, we just wanted to note that some technical revisions in HD1 could be misconstrued. Uh, currently, the, sorry, the bill language as it stands now states that, or could be construed to require that one member of the advisory group be considered a citizen group and a landscape professional rather than two separate members. So we've provided some recommendations in our written testimony. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Carlinda Greenwald from CTAR. Thank you, Chairman Gabbard. Thank you, Chair, uh, Vice Chair and members of the committee. We stand in full support of this measure. And this is Parvinda Greenwald's CTAR Dean here for answering any questions. Thank you. Department of Ag. Thank you, Dr. Kushida, Department of Agriculture. This is where definitely punctuation makes a difference. So if we could make those attorney general changes, um, that is much appreciated, as well as the, the reason for this is we just need to update. While there are pineapple and sugar cane growers still in Hawaii, we really uh, feel that we can we can put them into the diversified ag um, component of or seat on on this advisory committee. Thank you very much. Okay, Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand in strong support of the comma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Hunter Hevelin, Hawaii Farmers Union. Chair. Uh, Hunter Hevelin on behalf of Hawaii Farmers Union. We stand in support of this measure uh, and all of those who plumb the depths of our statutes to identify some of the uh, appendices that might need to be updated or excised. Um, our, we do request a friendly amendment that the government seek parity in the voice of agriculture that is represented in this body and that the Hawaii Farmers Union is also seeking a seat um, on this advisory committee. Happy to answer any questions and thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Ann Frederick with HAPA in support. Keopu Relitz or designee from OHA. Thank you. Jacqueline Ambrose is in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Members, any questions? Okay, let's take a brief recess uh, and do some decision making.
<laughs> reconvening the one o'clock AEN hearing. We've done the collaboration with the committee. Let's uh, go to the okay. measures here, starting off with HB 2104 relating to the Hawaii Invasive Species Council. Uh, chair's recommendation on this one will be to pass as is. Is any discussion? Okay. Chair votes aye. Thank you, Chair. On 2104, yes. as is. As is, yeah. Uh, chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Yeah, Senator Wall. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. The motion is adopted. Thank you, members. HB 2131, two line spittlebug. Chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Uh, 2131, chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Chair Rhodes. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion is adopted. Thank you, members. On HB 2133, uh, related to invasive species. Uh, the chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. We'd like to add uh, cookie frogs in our committee report. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. On 2133, chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion adopted. Uh, thank you, members. On HB 2134, uh, relating to the grant specialist positions in the Department of Ag. Which, by the way, had a nice uh, article in today's Civil Beat pushing this. Uh, so, <laughs> where'd that come from? <laughs> Chair's recommendation will be to uh, pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. On 2134, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Wall. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion adopted. Thank you, members. And then on uh, HB 2136. Relating to Ag and uh, Pesticide Inspection Program, uh, the Chair's recommendation will be to amend using the amendments from the Department of Ag. Uh, any discussion? And Chair votes aye. Pass with amendments. On 2136, pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Watt. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion adopted. Thank you, members. On uh, HB 2139 HD1, uh, requiring the Department of Ag to establish uh, an implemented invasive species and placard program. Uh, this does have a defective date, so uh, there's some controversy on this, and the chair is going to go ahead and recommend to pass this as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Uh, on 2139, chair votes aye. Vice chair is going to vote with reservations. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion is adopted. Thank you, members. Uh, on HB 2390, on the uh, requiring it, the PUC to explicitly consider the effect of the state's reliance on fossil fuels on life cycle, life cycle greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. On 2390, aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion adopted. Thank you, members. On HB 2590 on the food bank, uh, Appropriating funds for food bank purchases. The chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. On 2590, chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Watt. Aye. Chair, five in favor. Motion is adopted. Thank you, members. Uh, HB 2619 on the biosecurity program for Department of Ag to develop. Chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. On 2619, pass as is. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Alwa. Aye. Motion is adopted. You have five in favor. Thank you, members. On HB 25, 46. 
on the fine mesh nets uh, for the protection of plants against invasive species. Uh, Chair's recommendation will you to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. On 2546, pass it unamended. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rose. Aye. Senator Elwell. Aye. Chair, five in favor. Motion adopted. Thank you. And then on HB 2644, related to the fire ants. Uh, the chair's recommendation would be to pass as is, uh, noting in the committee report the HDOE's request for the creation of an exempt entomologist position within the plant pest control branch of the HDOA. Number one, number two, also that the HDOA supports the development of new facilities for the plant pest control branch. And three, HDOA's request funding to support the Hawaii Ant Lab in partnership with the plant pest control branch. All that in the committee report. Any discussion? Chair votes on. Chair verifying pass unamended. Is that correct? That's correct. That was in the committee pass, report. Uh, pass unamended on 2644. Chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion is adopted. Thank you very much. And then um, on HB 2337, <coughs> last measure on the 1 p.m. agenda relating to pesticides. <coughs> On the advisory committee on pesticides, the uh, chair's recommendation would be to pass with proposed amendments from the attorney general. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Thank you. On measure two three three seven, chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator DeCoy. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Wall. Aye. Chair, you have five in favor. Motion is adopted. Thank you very much, and that concludes the one p.m. agenda.